So hi to everybody at Painesville Lutheran. Um, Sig and I are still hanging in there in our house and we have our Easter egg tree from Germany. Yeah, it took me all, all winter to grow these eggs, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, we wish you a very blessed and happy Easter. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope uh, that uh, this will be over very soon. Yeah. And I know dog's looking at me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we miss you guys. Happy Easter. Good morning to you all and welcome to Easter worship with Painesville Lutheran Church. This morning we are sad that you are not with us here in this space this morning, but we also rejoice this day in the gift that comes to us, the gift of Jesus Christ being risen from the dead and bringing life and light to us as we gather. So wherever you are this morning, we welcome you and we invite you to join in this worship with us. Beginning this morning with a call to worship, uh, and please uh, respond with us. Uh, Pastor Paul will deliver the line with you, Christ is risen indeed. And so please join us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Darkness fades to light. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. The stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen indeed. The tomb is found empty. Christ is risen indeed. Morning has broken. Christ is risen indeed. And now because we can't go an Easter morning worship without some music and those familiar joyous hymns, we invite you now to sing along or just listen along with uh, Paula playing the first verse of, what, of the hymn that we would normally process in with. Jesus Christ is risen today. And the words will appear now on the screen. and peace from our God and Father, hope in our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us now take a moment to confess our sin in the presence of God and in spirit with one another. Let us pray. God of hope, we confess the despair of our own Good Fridays when we feel like hope is dying all around us and inside us. On this Easter, break through the barriers of our doubt and cynicism and bring the hope of your resurrection presence into our troubled hearts. We need you to break through the death of our sin and shame and bring your resurrection life. We need you to do what we cannot do for ourselves, and bring your promise of new life and the hope of conquered death. Forgive our sin and help us to see the open doorway to the good news of our own resurrection. Today brings the best news of all. Jesus lives. Jesus died a cruel death on the cross. His body was placed in a borrowed tomb and after three days the stone was rolled away. The tomb is open. Death is defeated. Jesus is alive. Hope is alive. Praise God for the new, good news of Easter. He is risen. Let us pray. 
O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to invite Pastor Paul back up for, again, another little surprise for you this morning as we welcome him with a special guest. We are going to try the bucket again on Easter morning. I wish, as I know you all do, wish you were here with us so that we could uh, share in this special time of trying to figure out what the bucket is together. Uh, Just so you know, the bucket, uh, I have no idea what's in here. And we've uh, gotten rid of the rules that we normally go by, and we're doing a little bit of a different way. Pastor to pastor challenge, and and here's the only rule. Uh, there, You can do anything you want. That's the rule. And it makes me nervous. I long for the days we're back together when I don't have to come up with things for Pastor Adam's uh, bucket choices. So here we are. We're going to make a an Easter message out of what uh, what might be in the bucket. <laughs> All right. Uh, We always laugh that uncomfortable laugh before we share what's in the bucket because we don't know what to do with it. So today it is a garage door opener. Is that right? It's a garage door opener uh, for us on Easter Sunday morning. So we're we're excited about this uh, gift. Um, And it's actually one that's really fitting for today. this uh, garage door opener, they're pretty handy things. We can press the button and automatically the, the door opens. We were able to get into our garages and we can get our cars out, get our bikes out, all those things. It's really a, really a handy tool. Uh, otherwise, all that stuff's locked away and we can't get into those spaces to get the things we need. Well, that's, that's just like the Easter story. Jesus was locked away in that tomb Locked away and all of those who cared for Jesus and followed Jesus thought it was all over. Thought they weren't able to get to the things that they needed to be with Jesus any longer. To have the light in their lives that they desperately longed for. And like this opener, uh, that stone was rolled away. And Jesus rose from that tomb and brings the gift of life to us all, reminds us uh, every day that we are uh, his, that we are called, that we are claimed, and that we're maimed. And so as you use your garage door openers at home, uh, remember the story of Christ. Remember the way that that tomb was opened up and the things we need most in our lives were, were given to us. We were set free. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for setting us free, for giving us uh, the things we need most in our lives, for loving us, for sending your Son to die for us, for raising him from the dead, and for giving us the hope we so desperately need. In your name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to try something a little unique this morning as we uh, look to share the peace with one another. Uh, Normally we would maybe get up and shake hands or we'd walk around and greet people in this space. But we're going to ask you now to share the peace in whatever way that you are able. Maybe you're gathered with family this morning and you can share uh, peace with one another by uh, giving each other a fist bump or a high five or a hug. Uh, But also, if you are not with anyone this morning, or you are uh, longing to be with others in community this morning, we invite you to take a moment here as we uh, listen to some music to to text or snap or direct message, uh, a message of peace to a family member or friend this morning. 
or leave a greeting of peace in the comments uh, on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching, uh, and share the peace out further than your house this morning through these uh, virtual means. And so I will start. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Now go and share the peace as we listen now to a special musical offering from our own Jared Campbell. gospel reading today comes from John chapter 20, verse 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to sit, tell Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there. And the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. As for, as, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom 
are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. As a pastor, and more importantly, as a Christian man, I live for this day. The day where I get to stand up here in the sanctuary of our church, and like Mary, I have the privilege of announcing the risen Christ. It is one of the most joyful and life-giving gifts we as pastors are blessed with. To be the proclaimers of Christ's resurrection on Easter morning. It is something that gives me a deep sense of humble awe. Just to be called to do this. But as you heard me share those words, this year seems different. To proclaim he is risen and to hear he is risen indeed by all who gather on Easter morning is vastly different this year. It is different this year for more, so many reasons for so many of us. It's different today as I share this message to an empty church. Where instead of seeing your faces, I see mostly empty chairs. It is different because it seems much of our lives are different right now. Forced isolation for some. Extremely demanding and dangerous work for others. An air of heaviness in our world that for the most part none of us have ever experienced before. Not what we expected on this Easter Sunday morning. That's what darkness does to us. The darkness of this world announces at every turn things are different. We struggle day in and day out to find meaning in the elements of our days. The work we do, the friends we have, the stuff we own. That meaning may fulfill us in some ways, but there is always this curious question. Does it really mean anything? Can those elements of our lives see us through the darkness that at times can consume our lives? Isn't that the definition of grief? To be lost. To be in the dark longing for meaning and asking. No pleading for some light in the darkness. Mary Magdalene had such grief. She was overcome with the loss of Jesus, simply longing for some sort of comfort as she went to the tomb where they laid the body of Jesus. Imagine how her heart sank and her grief must have been heavier still as she found the grave empty. Weeping and completely overcome with emotion. What could these two people dressed in white have done with Jesus, her friend? The very person that seemed to bring light wherever he went was gone. And now to make matters worse, she finds they had taken his body once more. For what purpose? Can't they just let him be at peace? 
Let us grieve for Jesus. Things were so different than the week before as they celebrated Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Things were just so different. Darkness and grief have a way of overshadowing what we know. But it also can have this powerful way of directing us to what is most important, too. Grabbing a hold of us and shaking off the trivial, the meaningless, to make room for the truth. Truth tends to be a movable target in our world right now, and seemingly far too elusive these days. And with all this misdirection, false cures for life's woes, self-help marketing that vie for our resources and attention, our world desperately groans for truth. Something meaningful to hold on to when the rest of our world lacks the familiarity that we were hoping for. And with truth comes meaning beyond the difficulties that we face. The hills we're trying to climb. The weight of burdens spoken and unspoken that we're trying to carry and the goals we've set for our own lives. Truth doesn't take these things away, but it does give richer meaning to our lives. And it does something even more powerful. With truth comes light. Well, for all of this season of Lent, one theme has been part of it all for us. This idea of enoughness. And where do we find it? How do we live life feeling like we rarely measure up to all sorts of expectations? How do we live life in the darkness of this world? Especially now in the different that we're all experiencing. It is at this very moment, at the heart of this kind of darkness, in the depth and the deepest part of Mary's grief, she comes face to face with the truth, the risen Christ. And she doesn't recognize him. She's all consumed with her own pain and her hurt. She wants to simply grieve. She doesn't recognize Jesus until he does something unbelievable. So mind-blowing, it stops Mary in her very tracks, and she sees the truth. She sees light in her grief. She sees something other than darkness that's all around her. What is that miraculous act that Jesus does? What could change all of Mary's thoughts and her perspective on the world around her in such a profound and life-giving way? Jesus calls her by name. Called her by her name. In that instance, there was light in the darkness. In that instance, everything changed. Everything that seemed paralyzingly different changed once more. Mary, at this point, becomes the first pastor to preach the good news of the risen Christ. She's the first to tell others of how Jesus conquered death and rose to new life. And with him, he brought all humanity to new life too. She preached that Easter message of light in the darkness to the disciples of Jesus saying, I have seen the Lord. She gave them an anchor of truth in an uncertain world. In their world where everything was different, they heard that Easter proclamation for the first time. He is risen. In their world where darkness weighed so heavy, they heard the life-giving words, He is risen indeed. There is the hope we long for in our world too. 
There is the truth. Nothing in this world can separate you from the life-giving love of Jesus. Nothing. Not the different way we are worshiping this day. Not the struggles of solitude, the worries and fears that overwhelm us all. Nothing can happen in your life and on this earth that can separate you from the love that Jesus shines in the darkness. His death paid the bill. And his resurrection ripped up the ledger that causes us to compare ourselves to others, belittle our own experiences, and says no more to the voices in our world and in our own minds that tell us that we are not enough. Jesus destroyed that ledger. You are enough. You are a child of God. And there is no darkness No pandemic, no grief that will change that truth. You are enough. I could say amen and end my sermon now. Because that is the hope we need to cling to in this uncertain time. But we're not done yet. There is more to the story in John. And we need to hear it. Jesus tells Mary more and tells us more. Jesus says to her, do not hold on to me. Jesus goes on to say that the work is not quite completed. There's more to do. This Easter story is not just a proclamation of the light for us. It is also a holy calling. A glorious parental nudge from God to say, now you see the light? Now you know that all those God-given gifts that you possess are not just to make your own life better. You and I are the continuation of the Easter story. There is still more to do. That is more evident now than perhaps ever before. Go tell the Easter story. Go tell of the light of Christ. Bring the light into the darkest of places where people, God's people, are hurting. You are creative people. You have imaginations and ideas that can spread light in the world in ways I can't even begin to imagine. If you're waiting for someone to say, it's okay to step out of your comfortable place and to try something, consider this your invitation. Be you. Be bold. Be a child of God and be the light of Jesus in the darkened, hurting world. And always remember that you are enough. You are a beloved child of God. And most importantly, you are being called by name. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. He He is is risen. risen. Lauren, do you say he has risen? He is risen. Do you say he has risen? George, are you up? Yes, I'm up. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Happy Easter. Easter. Hey, I found the Easter candy. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed.
indeed. <laughs> Look, there's a tulip. He has risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen. He has risen. He has risen. risen he is risen he is risen indeed christ is risen he is risen indeed my fans the lutheran we're the Bogleys, coming back from our morning walk happy easter i now invite you as we did just a little while ago to sing uh, if you are able to the first verse of now all the heavens, all the vaults of heaven resound. And we will uh, be hearing some beautiful music as we do this. And you can sing along or you can uh, just enjoy the music as we celebrate Easter today together. Sunday morning, we would like to thank you this morning for all the ways that you continue to make the ministry and the mission of Painesville Lutheran Church and the larger Christian church happen through your gifts of time and energy and, of course, your financial gifts. We, uh, you continue to make the work of Painesville Lutheran Church happen while we are apart by continuing to connect with one another by making masks for medical professionals, by tuning in to worship with us on these mornings and uh, through our midweek services as well. Uh, But you also continue to make the ministry of this place happen while we're apart through your financial gifts. And those financial gifts sustain the ministry of this place into the future, into the days ahead where we can be together and where we are doing the things that we are used to doing together on a weekly basis. And so we invite you uh, and thank you for uh, your continued gifts, and we invite you to uh, take a moment uh, this morning, once worship is over, to seek out our online giving platform that we will include as a link in these videos uh, but also you can send your gifts via mail and or, or drop them in the drop box outside the main uh, door of the church, if you so choose. Uh, we know that this is a difficult time financially for everyone, and so we are just so grateful for anything that you are able to give. But mostly we are grateful for all of you who make up this large body of Christ that goes out into this world when we are able to do the work of Jesus Christ for our neighbors and for the world. So thank you for your continued support of the mission and ministry of Painesville Lutheran Church. Now let us join together in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
as we conclude our worship service this morning, we do so with, you guessed it, announcements. And so uh, here are a few announcements for our life together as we move into the weeks to come. First is a final reminder that you have now uh, just three more days to uh, turn in uh, endowment grant applications. We will uh, include a link to those applications uh, with this video, Uh, but those are due April 15th. A special reminder for anyone who is enrolled in higher education or will be uh, this fall that you have the opportunity to receive an educational grant from our uh, endowment, and that happens in the spring. And so we invite you and your families to uh, specifically to uh, apply for this granting season. Worship will continue for our community in this way uh, until at least the time when we are not under a stay-at-home warning or a stay-at-home uh, order. And so we invite you to continue tuning in on Sunday mornings at 8.30 as we premiere recorded messages and services for you. Uh, but they will be available on Facebook and YouTube as you all have continued to tune in in those ways. But those will be on Sunday mornings at 8.30 as we have done leading up to this day. And uh, a special thank you this morning to all who helped make this worship service happen. Uh, you can't see most of them on the screens, uh, but Kari and Tammy are back making sure that we sound and look good. And so we thank them for their work this morning. And off to my side here, you heard them both, but you, you didn't see them. Uh, Paula and Brett, Paula Geyer and Brett Bungham are here playing music for us this morning on organ and trumpet. And sp- so a special thank you to you both. I'm looking th- at them off the screen. There they are. Thank you both. You are awesome. Uh, and uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in this morning and for being a part of this community. We uh, continue to be uh, sad and miss you. And we love you, and we uh, are so looking forward to the time where this space is filled with with all of you uh, sitting in your chairs, uh, standing and singing, praying and uh, laughing and singing and all the things that we do together in this space. Uh, We just so look forward to the time where we are in person together again. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and please take care of one another. We continue to look to the gift of Jesus Christ risen this day for the hope that we need to make it through these days ahead. And so now go and live into Christ's new reality that despair is turning to hope, death is changing to life, and darkness is overwhelmed with resurrection life. Amen. We invite you once more to sing along with us or to listen along with us as we uh, sing our closing hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. The words will once again appear now on the screen. to share the good news of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. He is risen. He is risen indeed.